This meeting of the Wairika City Council uh, for March 19th, 2024 is being called to order. Um, we're gonna go, um, um, I'm gonna ask if there's anybody online. There is nobody in the auditorium for public comment. Is there anybody online? Thank you, okay, thanks. Therefore, um, we'll go ahead and go to number item to item three, closed session. The city council will recess to closed session to discuss the below items. At the conclusion of the closed session, open session will reconvene and reportable action, if any, will be announced. Conference uh, A, conference with real property negotiator. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> Please join us in um, the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with our and justice for all. All right. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for coming to the Rarica City Council for March 19th, 2024. Um, just want to remind everybody in our audience and our city council members to silence your cell phones at this time. And we did have a closed session uh, meeting at 530, and we do not have any reportable action at this time. And Mr. Ledbetter, you had something to state before we get started? Yes, Mr. Mayor, we have an item that we would like to add to the agenda on emergency. All right. It, it revolves around the uh, Kiwana's uh, Easter egg hunt uh, on Easter. Okay, great. Okay, and this, this, this came in after the agenda was posted, so we do have to have the discussion with city council if they would wish to, would like to put this item on for the agenda, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. We need, we need a, a vote, I believe. Yes, okay, great. Um, so this is for, to place the Kiwana's Easter egg hunt at, is it Minor Street Park? They're having at Minor Street Park? That's correct. Okay. Minor Street Park, um, Easter, before Easter, Easter weekend. Um, so they're requesting that to be put on the agenda. Uh, what are the wishes of the council to place that um, on the agenda? Um, Councilman like Cake? Make, I'd like to make a motion to to put that on the agenda right after, because we, we didn't say, did we win? So I'd, right after the consent agenda. That's okay. Um, so before old business, so it'd be seven, make it seven or eight in between there. <laughs> However you want to put right it. Before, right before old business? Right okay. before old business. Okay. Yeah, that way it gets out of the way. Okay. Before eight. I have a motion from Councilman Cake to put the item on the agenda for the Kiwanis Easter egg hunt um, before item number eight on the old business. I'll second that. I have a second uh, from Councilman McCoy, and I'll go for roll call uh, wishes of the council. Councilman Cake? Aye. Councilman Davis? Aye. Councilman Baker? Yes. Pro Tem Councilman McCoy? Aye. Mayor Middleton will be aye, so the motion passes five to zero to place the item on the agenda. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. Okay, we'll move to item number five. This is for special presentations and or announcement. This time slot is for informational presentations, appointments, and awards to be presented by the city council or to the city council. Mr. Leber, do we have any special presentations tonight? Uh, none tonight, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you. Uh, item number six, public comments. Public participation is welcomed and invited at all city council meetings. This time is set aside for residents to address the city council on matters listed on the consent agenda, as well as other items not included on the regular agenda. If your comment 
concern an item noted on the regular agenda, please address the council when that item is open for public comment. The city requests that persons addressing the city council refrain from making personal slanderous, profane and disruptive remarks. Council members when recognized by the mayor may ask clarifying questions of the presenter, but no action may be taken by the city council during the public comment section of the meeting. Under the Brown Act, the city council is prohibited from discussing or taking action on any item not listed on the posted agenda. This time is set aside for residents to address the city council on matters listed on the consent agenda, as well as other items not included on the agenda. If your comments concern an item listed under the public hearing or new business sections of the agenda, please address the council when that item is open for public comment. Please speak into the microphone from the podium, the podium electronically adjust up and down to accommodate the speaker. Please state your name for the record prior to providing your comments. Please address the council as a whole. If you have documents to present, please provide a minimum of seven copies. These become public record. Please limit your remarks to five minutes. Since council is unable to take action on issues not on the agenda, your matter may be referred to staff for follow-up or placed on a future agenda item. The, pub the public comment period is not intended to be a question and answer period or conversations with the council or city staff. Do you have any public comment at this time? Any public comment? Well, I'm going to turn on my mouth. It's kind of dark. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name is Mike Griffintini, and I, my address is uh, 2903 Watson Court, Montague. And um, I hope I'm not speaking out of order here. I want to talk about two issues. One is that I am um, what's called Cisco Historic Tours. I have a Facebook page, and I've been giving historic tours for as long as I've lived back here in Wairika. I dressed up in old costume. Hopefully sometime some of you will come to one of my tour if you haven't already. The idea when I set up the tours um, sponsored by the Historical Society was that it would be not only something that local people could do and enjoy, but also tourists could do. But the problem that I, one of the problems I wanted to bring up was that um, it's hard to make it a Wairika tourist event without any Wairika advertisement. You know, so when there was a chamber of commerce who I would have thought would normally have been advertising events that for whatever reason never seemed to work. And now that we don't have a chamber of commerce, um, I'm not still, I'm confused about how to make a city event that might be interesting for tourists knowledgeable to tourists. So I'll just leave that question out to you. The other part is, and I may be speaking at a turn here, if we're going to talk about future events downtown, I represent the uh, Genealogy Society of Siskiyou County, and we are totally in support of any and all events. We have our office on Minor Street. We are willing to change our hours that we will be open so that we will accommodate any and all events, and we hope the more we have, the better. And thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else before uh, I close public comment? All right, I will close public comment. Go to item number seven, the consent agenda. All matters listed on the consent agenda are considered routine and non-controversial and will be acted by one motion unless the member of the council wishes to remove an item for discussion. A, approval ratification of payments issued from February 26, 2024 through March 10th, 2024. B, cash balances budget to actual and fiscal performance reports for January 2024. C, approval of re resolution number 2024-12, approve the transmission of the 2023 general plan annual progress report to the governor's office of planning and research and the California Department of Housing and Community Development. D, approval of minutes on the regular meeting held March 5th 
2024 e acceptance of a donation to the Riker Fire Department from Timber Products in the amount of five thousand dollars and establishment of budget. The recommended City Council action before you is the motion to adopt the consent agenda of the City Council of the City of Wairika as presented. For the wishes of the Council, Councilman Cake. Um, I'll make a motion. So moved. I have a motion from Councilman Keg. I'll second that motion. A second from Councilman Baker. I'll do roll call. Councilman Keg. Aye. Councilman Davis. Aye. Councilman Baker. Yes. Pro Tem Councilman McCoy. Aye. Mayor Middleton. Aye. The motion passes five to zero. Old business is city manager and city attorney. Mr. Oops. Mayor, we're going to do the uh, Kiwanis. Oh, I'm sorry. See, I already forgot short term memory here. <laughs> okay, so we are going to <laughs> um, the Kiwanis Easter egg hunt. Mr. Ledbetter. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor and uh, Wairika City Council. This is Jason Ledbetter, the city manager. So this is pretty self explanatory. Uh, Kiwanis will be hosting um, on Saturday, March 30th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m an Easter egg hunt. Uh, it'll entail about 10,000 eggs uh, for families to go scavenge and hunt. Uh, they're also looking for a donation of $500 in order to facilitate um, the purchasing of all this candy. And so really without further ado, I'll leave it up to the council to make this decision. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Ledbetter. <clears throat> Do you have any questions from the council or what are the wishes of the council at this time? Further requests um, from the Kiwanis for $500 for the Easter egg hunt to help be held on March, March 30th, 2024. Not everybody at once. Yeah. And Mr. Mayor, if there's no commentary, I would suggest a public comment. Okay. No questions here. Okay. Public comment regarding the Easter egg hunt. Okay, come on to the podium. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry, I thought you raised your hand to come down. All right, I will close public comment and go to the council. What are the wishes of the council? Um, if no one makes a motion, I will make the motion okay. to approve the donation for $500 to the Kiwanis for the Easter egg hunt to help be held March 30th. 2024 at Minor Shape Park. Oh. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. We do have a recommended oh. action on the handout it? given to you. Oh, okay. the final paragraph. Uh, sorry, I'll go back. So the recommendation is to adopt the resolution approving requests associated with a special event being held by the Kiwanis, known as the Kiwanis Club, Easter egg hunt, and finding the expenditure of such monies and staff assistance and benefit the, to the public at large. So I'll make the motion to approve. I'll second. Uh, this is Councilman McCoy. I'll second the motion, Mr. Mayor. And I have a second for Councilman McCoy. I'll do roll call. Councilman Cake. Aye. Councilman Davis. Yes. Councilman Baker. Yes. Pro Tem Councilman McCoy. Aye. And Mayor Middleton. Aye. So the motion passes five to zero. All right. Okay. Now I move to old, old business. City manager, city attorney. This is A, the agenda title, ballot measure draft language development. Draft ballot measure language is being presented with the intent to receive feedback and direction of the ballot measure language for introduction at a future city council meeting. Mr. Ledbetter or Mr. Jarrett? Yeah, just give me one minute. Oh, oh, sure. um, I'll, I'll be, be up at the podium here in just one sec. Okay. <laughs> sure. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor, Wairika City Council. Once again, this is Jason Ledbetter, the city manager. Uh, here tonight, we're uh, going to discuss the city currently has insufficient funding streams to continue to provide the level of service for municipal activities 
across the board, increased demand for services such as fire and police require that additional funding be explored. Uh, here, draft ballot measure language is being presented with the intent to receive feedback and direction on language for formal introduction at a future city council meeting. So you are not deciding whether or not something is going to go on a future ballot at all tonight. What we're looking for is just discussion and direction as to if you do decide to move forward with a ballot initiative, are you satisfied with some proposed language? So at the January 30th, 2024 City Council meeting, the Wairika City Council passed a motion to direct the city attorney and city staff to develop ballot measure language for a sales tax measure. At the meeting, it was requested that draft language of the ballot measure be brought back for discussion prior to being brought to the city council for action. The following draft language is being presented with the intent to ask C, I think that's CTFDA, uh, to review such language and bring back resolutions and draft ordinance for approval to place such measure on the future ballot. If you'll recall within your packet on page 71, we had proposed language that we looked at last meeting. Uh, council gave direction to staff to review possible overlap language to a prior ballot measure called Measure H. Uh, measure H is a special tax for the fire department that brings in about $300,000 annually and is used primarily for purchasing large equipment, uh, specifically engines and rigs for fire and medical response. The language in the original Measure H ballot initiative was very specific to the fire department, and I don't see any alterations to the proposed language that seem feasible based off of the specificity of the Measure H language. The other requested change to the proposed language was to change the word recreation to services. So based on the feedback from the council and some staff members at the meeting, clarity around verbiage differences for a special versus a general sales tax uh, were wanting to be explored and to provide the council with options and understanding between a special and general sales tax, our attorney has provided the following three options, which I will now read. So these are the different hypothetical proposed languages, and I will then articulate the difference in what that would mean at the ballot box for passing. The first one is a general sales tax initiative, and this is a simple majority required for passage, and this is the verbiage. To maintain and improve essential city services, including local firefighting and emergency medical response, hire and train firefighters, upgrade, replace aging firefighting safety equipment, life-saving tools, and an outdated firehouse, and support police, senior and youth services, and other city services, shall an ordinance be adopted to impose a 1% sales tax, providing approximately $2.4 million annually for general government use until ended by voters with independent audits and all funds staying local. So of the three proposed initiatives in front of you today, that is the only general sales tax initiative, meaning it's a 50% plus one vote. The money is not legally able to be earmarked uh, specific to any certain department, it would be a part of the general fund and the city council, this council and future councils would make determinations when they pass budgets on how that money would, would be spent. The following is a special sales tax for, uh, and this we're calling for PD and fire department. This would require a two thirds majority uh, for passage and the verbiage is as stated to maintain and improve essential public safety services, including local police, firefighting and emergency medical response, hire and train police and fire personnel, upgrade, replace aging firefighting safety equipment, life-saving tools and an outdated firehouse and support police services shall an ordinance be adopted to impose a 1% sales tax 
providing approximately $2.4 million annually for general government use until ended by voters with independent audits and all funds staying local. And finally, the third uh, reference for you guys to consider is also another special tax. This would be very specific only for the fire department. And this obviously would also require a two thirds majority uh, for passage. And the verbiage is as stated. To maintain and improve local firefighting and emergency medical response, hire and train fire personnel and upgrade replace aging firefighting safety equipment, life-saving tools, and an outdated firehouse, shall an ordinance be adopted to impose a 1% sales tax, providing approximately $2.4 million annually for general government use until ended by voters with independent audits and all funds staying local. So we're giving you three different templates really to work on. And so I guess really one of the first questions I would kind of articulate would be if this were to happen because you're not making that decision today, nothing is set in stone that this now goes to the ballot that is not happening today. An ordinance has to get passed. But if we are to move forward with this project, we need to probably hammer down, is this going to be a 50% plus one or is it going to be a two thirds? And then is there some verbiage here that you really do like? Is there something here that makes sense? Is there a template that you think we should utilize? Is there something that you would all agree to today or do you want to maybe massage some of this language? We have our city attorney present um, really specifically for this item. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ledbetter. All right. <clears throat> so I'm gonna counsel for questions or concerns or questions regarding the three proposed options we have. I know at the last meeting we had, we had some concerns brought up from Councilman Davis regarding one of the wording not be specific to the fire department only and some other citizens um, had concerns as well that some of the wording on the other proposed ballot measures would be for other services as well. So uh, I'll go to council for questions or comments or feedback or Anything for Mr. Jared or from them? First. Let's go first. Councilman Baker. Well, you look eager. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Middleton. <laughs> I'll just jump right in. Okay. Um, I um, actually did an informal poll of just some of my contacts in the community and they were more in favor of a special tax for the fire department. And uh, I also, now that you've added the police department, I like that one myself. So based on feedback that I received from members of the community. Okay. So I guess I'll call it option number two, right? Special yeah. tax. PD and fire department, two thirds majority required. Okay. Councilman Cake. Jump right in there too then. Um, yeah, I, I agree with uh, uh, Councilman Baker there that um, the people that I surveyed and spoke with too is in the same, same regards and um, that we keep it to the majority to going to the local fire department and it's, it needs to be required because this is one of those things that we can't necessarily always trust what the future council would love to say that we can trust the future council, which we in the past on our tax that we did before we have we've held to our guns on where that money went to on on our on our last uh, sales tax increase, but um, there's no guarantees where this would be a guaranteed thing to go to our local our local fire department and whatnot. So. I, I tend to agree with you on that. Um, thank you. So, 
that's all I have to say also. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Cake. Councilman Davis. Well, I seem to be tending towards the uh, first one, the general tax. That's kind of where I was leaning. Uh, but I, I can definitely see the point of uh, Ms. Baker and Mr. Cake. So that's where I am. All right. Councilman McCoy. <clears throat> I think it's probably imperative that we move forward on fire department, new fire department structure, as well as being able to hire some full-time uh, fire staff. That being said, we know that we're probably, if we go with the two thirds, we're, gonna, we're probably gonna take six, two to six years to get it approved. We know that already, we've seen it in past, elections. That's not uncommon. Um, I don't know if the current fire chief or the staff can wait that long or how patient they are. Um, I'm going to concur with Councilman Davis because as I look at how we're paying for the police station, we are, we, we, we pay, we make a, a large payment every year. We would be doing the same through a USDA loan for a fire department. Should the council at that time choose not to make that payment, that would be fine and dandy. And then the USDA would step in and then probably the city manager, whoever that might be at the time, would figure out how the city declares bankruptcy. I think it would, it's very foolish of us to think that a council is going to do that. I've not seen it in the 38 years I have lived here. I've seen the councils be wise about the money. That's why I'm probably more trusting about uh, um, the way the money's handled. Um, the other thing is, um, if the money, if they needed money, if they so for some reason you need money for police services or something like that, you know, um, and there's extra money. I mean, we're a growing city. This is based on a sales tax, which in my opinion is the fairest tax but as we continue to grow if we get other businesses in here that means more income more income equates to more money for fire for police for whatever services so um i am going to concur with the uh, councilman davis on the on the 50 percent plus one for that very reason because i don't think we can wait two four six eight years uh you know Right. Thank you, Council McCoy. No need to be sorry. <laughs> Your time. So I'm on the fence. <laughs> um, I know we're not deciding anything tonight. Um, I want to express, you know, my support for our YPD and our fire department wholeheartedly. Number one. Um, but I have concerns, but it's going to be up to the voters once we decide and put the ballots up to the voters when they go to the polls, if there's going to be enough people who go for a two-thirds vote in the passage of it the first time. It, it may, may not. I don't know. Um, as I stated last meeting, out of 7,000 some odd people in Marika, only 3,400 around there go to vote. So that's a pretty high percentage for voters to pass a two-thirds. So that's my main concern of going for a two thirds. Um, you know, I think other citizens do when I'm talking to them, I received the opposite. <clears throat> I received the support for the general tax because of youth, senior services, our parks. If it's just a little bit that we can put towards you know, after we, the fire department comes first and um, everything else, if a little bit can go towards the services that are the future of our RECA, whether, you know, be our youth and the end of the life, you know, people reaching the end of their life for services like the senior center, meals and wheels or whatever it is, maybe that they're part of our community as well. So, um, 
Um, so I guess I'm not on the fence as, uh, as much as I thought after looking at something and been hearing my council members and I appreciate everything they have to say and I agree with everything they say, but I would lean towards the general tax simple uh, majority required for passage. That would be number one as well. So I will end with that and I will. I just wanted to make a comment sure. since since you're not making this decision nope. tonight, you can possibly move forward with these two options that we would then bring back to you if you so choose to try to place something on the ballot. All we're wanting to do is really solidify that we're not dealing with language okay. if we move forward and that the state is OK with the language and we're not uh, at the 25th hour making alterations to a ballot measure language. So ultimately, if you're kind of on the fence, uh, you have two, in my opinion, mm -hmm. one and two, and now you can transition to just the language. Are you guys satisfied with the language? And ultimately, we could be bringing back both options for you at a future meeting. Okay. I personally, I will go first um, for a change. I personally am fine with the language on each of them. Um, Mr. McCoy, or Councilman McCoy is fine, and so is Councilman Keg. Councilman Davison. I think Mr. Uh, Jared has done a fine job. Okay. Councilman Baker. I would concur with uh, Councilmember Davis. Thank you. All right. Okay. And I will. Oh. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. uh, we still need to do public <laughs> comment. Okay. Exactly. Jumping right in on me before I get it out. I know I forget sometimes. Okay. So now I'm going to go to public comment at this time. I know I do forget Mr. Ledbetter, but it wasn't that time I got, got it. <laughs> Audrey, Audrey, um, I have a stupid question. Why can't we put all three on the ballot and let the voters decide? The taxpaying voters. Can we not do that? That would be the way to go. That's the honest way to go. And then you'll find out exactly what the people want. Thank you, Don Marie. Good question. Lorenzo Lowe. This city council lied to us before about a general tax that was supposedly for the fire department. You two weren't here. You don't know about this. Joan Smith Freeman wanted an aquatic park. There was no way to pay for it. So she had the great idea of let's have a general tax for the fire department, except only a token amount would go to the fire department and the vast majority would go to, the, to her pet project that's aquatic park. You people lied. You three lied to us. You are going along with this. We don't trust you with a general tax. I encourage everyone to look at the recording of the last meeting and see about all these other wonderful things you want to use this tax money on besides the fire department. The fire department is not going to get a pittance from this because you got all these other pet projects you got to do. You're going to lose this because we can't trust you people. You lied to us about this before. You lied to us about the utility rate, which is a tax by another name. You're not trustworthy. You need to go with option three because this $2.4 million isn't going to stretch very far when you try to do the police and the fire department. You're going to use at least half of that money for, for just buying the, uh, uh, employing the paramedics. I don't want to hear about this loan, which doesn't exist, may never exist. You may be able to get grants for this. Option three is the only reasonable thing, the only thing that the public is going to trust you people with. Thank you, Lorenzo.
Any other public comment? Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council members. Good evening. Uh, Jerry Stock. Uh, the idea that Don Marie had is kind of a good idea, but it's a case that uh, it's not an option to get voters all three. And when you do have to pick one, regardless of which one that is, um, from a, a business owner uh, who Unfortunately, started their business at the beginning of COVID, and they worked through that, and then uh, worked through the wiring the road construction, got through most of that. We're fortunate enough to be relocated to a great location. And we're really excited about that. Um, I don't think anybody in this city is going to be excited about the sales tax. Okay. So, I would pick your top few: fire, kids. Education, important things. If you have to go down the general direction, but maybe add to your language that uh, the city will not increase the sales tax going forward for the fire. Commit to something because the previous things that I just mentioned were giant hurdles, and it would be nice to have a long straight road for a while with help from the city doing everything they, they can to encourage. The growth of population that we're talking about in Wairika also has to deal with affordable shopping. So just keep it all in mind. Thank, Thank you. you so much. One was people are waiting for a big farmer to market on the main street on Fridays. We are, excuse me, sir. We are going to be bringing that up to the agenda or on the agenda item. So when that item does come back, I invite you to come back to that um, item that's open for discussion for the farmers market. Okay, thank you. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Mayor. He needs to say his name for the record, oh, please. And I'm sorry. And say, say your name for the record. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Again, I'm like, again. Did you get that, Miss City Clerk? Oh, she got it. The next one is people in the, the historic district. I was wanting to get it to the gated community. Okay. I'm going to interrupt you again. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll try to be the bad person. But we are on the item. We're discussing the ballot measure and for the fire department at this time. Public comment was at the beginning. If an item does come back as the farmer's market, I invite you to come back up. But right now we're discussing the proposed ballot you language. Said this was public comment when the other person. But we had public comment at the first. Now we are of a public comment regarding the item specific item that we have been discussing. This is the ballot language for the uh, fire department or essential services for the tax, mm -hmm. specific to the tax at this time. All right. Thank you, sir. Any other public comment regarding the proposed tax ballot language? <laughs> Hi, Donna Gatch. As you know, I've had an intimate, relation, intimate relationship with the fire department lately. Good to see you. And if there's a way to nail this down that the fire department gets all those funds, we need to do that. I understand that they have to let the air out of their tires when they pull into the mm -hmm. fire department. How long does it take to put air in tires? We've done that before. It takes a few minutes, and that's that few minutes can save a life. So I think you ought to go with one of the options that nails that down. And not because I don't trust all of you, but there are going to be more city councils and there's going to be more attractive things that we think we just have to have. And um, I think we should go to the fire department. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Good to see you. <laughs> Glad you're back.
Any other public comment regarding the proposed language for the ballot? Mike Lurlick, uh, I have the Montague, but um, I just wanted to say it seems like it'd be uh, the option of 50% towards the fire department might be, it seems like it's only a two thirds for just fire. Uh, so if it was 50% plus one towards the fire department, that seems to be a popular, at least among the people who are here. Uh, rather than needing two thirds. Maybe I'm misunderstanding, but yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Get some clarification on that. You want me to clarify or okay, Andrew yeah, to clarify? Yeah, just make sure no we'll let and I'll let Andrew clarify that after we're done. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I'm sorry. If there's no other if there's no other public comment, I will close public comment. Okay, I will close public comment. And I will go to um, Mr. Jared, our city attorney, to clear up some misconceptions and maybe answer some of the questions that the audience um, had. Mr. Jared? Yeah, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, as to the two thirds simple majority question, if an item uh, placed on the ballot is going to be a general tax, um, it only requires a 50% plus one vote um, threshold. If it is going to be a special tax, it requires a two-thirds majority to be, uh, for passage. An item that is um, described in the uh, on page 72 of the packet, the first question, a general tax incorporates, uh, there's a focus on firefighting and medical response, but it uh, very clearly applies to um, all other city services as well and has the new language that is uh, required uh, should uh, another measure pass in November um, on that second to last line, uh, $2.4 million annually for general government use. And so that makes it very clear that that question would what the voters would be voting for would be for monies to be spent for anything that the general fund could fund. The other two questions are focused, they're we call special taxes, and the monies would be restricted for the uses um, specified in the questions presented there. There's been um, a number of times it's been stated that um, this will have to come back to you for a, an ordinance. What that means is it'd be coming back to you for you to adopt a resolution as a council attached. <coughs> Spoke too long. <laughs> I'll keep it brief. <laughs> that was your hint. <clears throat> So we will come back to you uh, for final form. Um, if you were to place something on the ballot, it would be a resolution. Attached to that resolution would be an ordinance. In those two items, there would be much more clarity as to the issues that you all are adopting um, and proposing to the voters, and the voters would then adopt. And there would be a lot more language directing um, where monies would go and, and so forth. Um, but these questions here are to get us started on, on that process, to find out what um, the voters are comfortable with, what um, the council is comfortable with for a general tax, special tax, um, and two-thirds majority, simple majority, et cetera. So this is, um, as Mr. Ledbetter is saying, we're getting started quite early in this process. Um, many cities, um, don't get started until July Jeez. in this type of process. <laughs> well, maybe some counties sometimes have as well. And that first week of August is the, the deadline to place things on the ballot. And sometimes that becomes too late. So, um, there were a couple of questions. There was one question, you want me to answer those questions? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, one speaker had the question, why not put all three on the ballot and let the voters decide? 
I believe that there would be a way to get that done. I'd have to check um, specific as to these things, but um, in our recent election, I do recall seeing um, a, a city with multiple uh, ballot measures on a same or similar topic. Um, and, and so I just don't know off the top of my head and I apologize, I don't have a computer hook up here um, to, to look that up right now. Um, so we, we could bring that back. Um, the uh, other one about a commitment to not put um, an item on uh, another sales tax increase on the ballot for the next five years. Um, I, I would have to research that one too, but uh, I believe I've seen a way that that has been phrased as well. So I think that those, if, if the direction is to, to research those, I certainly could. All right. Thank you, Mr. Derrick. Appreciate that. <laughs> Okay. Oh, do you have a question? Yeah. Mr. Cage? Just, okay. Yeah. Um, Councilman Cage, I'm sorry. I would definitely like to see some of those questions cleared up because I think they're very good questions. Yes. Um, the only, my only concern of putting all three of them on there would be um, the confusion to the to the voters out there, but if they read what if they read it, then they should understand it. But that's not not always the case. But I would be my only my only concern was that the the voters might get confused with diff, three different ones on there, and have a problem with that. And the only other thing was if that is something that we went on the ballot for you, Mr. Um, Jared, is if that went as all three on there, would that have to be like delayed for another year to where it would be all three on there? And then they're voting on that, and then we get a vote that they want to go with that direction. Then and then, is it now delayed for another two years because of that? Yeah. So, I, I good question. <laughs> good question. Okay. But I, I think the way it gets simplified is um, with multiple questions on the ballot. Um, all multiple questions can go on a ballot. Uh -huh. The part that I. I don't know off the top of my head is which one wins. Right. Um, and I, I believe it becomes the one with the most votes wins, which then means it's the special taxes right. that win. Um, and then the question becomes, well, if the special tax uh, doesn't win and the, the, the general tax does have 50% uh, plus one, does that pass? Right. And so those are the, the nuances on the question that uh, I want to I want to. Do, I think I have an answer to it, but I, I don't want to blurt it out tonight. Uh, I want to do the research on it, and um, if that's the direction you would like to, to hear more on that, I, I would. Admit that's up to the rest of the council. Is that okay? For him to research those questions and bring them back to us. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, thank you. Um, I think having three uh, tax measures on the ballot would just confuse. do nothing but confuse voters. So I don't, I don't support the taking the time to research that personally. I guess my question would be: Would it just if it needs two thirds to pass, and you're getting the voters to go and they're checking their box for many different? options and then say none of them pass because they don't reach 50 plus one or they don't reach the two thirds vote, right? That's a, and then they all fail. And then that's what I see would be the problem. There's a lot of different, what, what the voting pool we have, as you know, Councilman Baker with the voting pool we have in Barrica city limits, isn't that much. So if you yeah. get several people voting for three different items and they all fail because there was too many options to choose from. Yeah, yeah that, that would be my concern, but it was a good question. Councilman Davis. I concur with <laughs> Councilman Baker. I, I think one is more than ample. <laughs> so whichever one we decide, that's the way we should go if we're going to go do it. You know. Right. Okay. I would concur with the councilman and councilwoman seated to my right. Um, we have to remember as councilmen, we cannot 
we can't go out and uh, people probably think, well, politic for this, we cannot do it. Somebody asks us a question, we can explain it, but um, we're hoping that our firemen will be out there and talking about it. Uh, you know, so whatever we do, though, we need to do it because if we are going to fail at an election, then we will need a count of another council will need to go back in two years. Thank you, Council McCoy. So I guess you don't have to research it. That's what I'm kidding. I don't know, but that's what I, um, maybe one of the other questions, but that's one I don't think, I don't think uh, the third placing three is going to be an option. All right. What, what do you have so you'll bring this back. Uh, what meeting, um, Councilman? I mean, I'm sorry, City Manager um, Ledbetter. Yeah, I think at this point we won't be making any judgment on bringing anything back. If I'm reading what, uh, read it into what the statements that are being made is that you guys like I item language one and language two. And if it is decided that this council wants to move forward, those two options should come forward as individual resolutions uh, at a future meeting where we work with our city attorney to time out uh, the time frames that are required with the county clerk's office. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. And just oh. to clarify, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, we would take both uh items to the state just to make sure that the language met uh their requirements all right thank you appreciate that okay move on, uh, sorry move on to item number nine this is a public hearing public hearing protocol one the mayor will describe the purpose of the public hearing two city staff will provide the staff report three city staff will respond to questions from the city council but uh, for mayor, mayor would open the public hearing. The public wanting to comment will come to the podium, provide the city clerk with their name and address and provide their comments. Mayor would close the public hearing. The city council will deliberate and act on the item. This is item 9A, agenda title, Tax Exempt and Fiscal Responsibility Act T. I guess they call it TEFRA, T-E-F-R-A, hearing adoption of a resolution approving issuance of bonds by the California Statewide Community Development Authority for financing uh, the Shadow Garden Apartments. The purpose of this hearing is to hold a hearing pursuant to allow the applicant to seek financing by the California Statewide Community Development Authority for the issuance of a tax-exempt tax facility bonds for a qualified residential rental project pursuant to Section 142A7 of the Eternal Revenue Code. Mr. Ledbetter. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Wairika City Council, Jason Ledbetter, City Manager. We do have on the line, uh, to clarify any questions, Mr. John Bacigalupi. Uh, no relation, I don't believe, to the folks in the audience, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, and so ultimately what's happening here is that there's some subsidized ability to uh, be at the shadow garden apartments and there is an opportunity because a certain amount of time has passed that uh, Mr. Bachigalupi is now able to access more funding uh, in order to improve the shadows garden apartments. And there is a requirement for a public hearing, which is what we are currently having. And ultimately what we would be looking for tonight, we would give you the opportunity to speak to Mr. Bacigalupi, uh, but we're recommending the adoption of resolution 2024-13 of the city council of the city of Wairika, approving the issuance by the California statewide communities development authority of exempt facility bonds for a qualified residential rental project for the shadow garden apartments. And so this funding would be utilized to, to make beautification efforts and then efforts, I believe, uh, within, within the structure itself. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Lebeter. Good evening, Mr. Bachigalupi. How are you? Is he there? Uh, sorry for the slight delay. Oh. I'm doing uh, yeah, just wanted to open up my comments by thanking the City Council for facilitating this public hearing required 
uh, for the financing that uh, we'll use to uh, do substantial rehabilitation of the Shadows Garden apartments. Uh, so just want to thank the council for placing this item on your agenda. All right. Thank you so much for being with us. And then if the council has any questions, we'll have them come to you. Um, so I will go to um, the, the council if they have any questions for city staff or for Mr. Uh, Batcher Galupi that is on Zoom for the project for the Shadow Gardens Apartments. No questions, Council McKay? Councilman Davis, any questions? Make sure you speak sorry, very loud in the. Um, I'm sorry, since he is on the line. Yep. Yeah. Um, I I I kind of was a little confused. Um, who pays this back? Most bonds are paid back. So the bonds to finance the rehabilitation of the property will be paid back 100 percent through uh, revenues from the project. Uh, there's no, this financing does not create any sort of obligation on the part of the city of Wairika to service the debt or, uh, or inject any funding, uh, yeah, any funding of its own into the project. We have state of California home funds. We have the tax exempt financing. Uh, the city manager has referenced it's the subject of this TEPRA hearing. And then finally, we have uh, a 4% low income housing tax credits uh, to provide uh, provide equity to to round out our financing stack. So, uh, so no obligation created on the part of the city. All right, does that answer your question, Mr. Davis? Did that answer your question? That answered that part of it, yes. Okay. <laughs> Why, why is it in front of us? Mr. Ledbetter? There's a required uh, public hearing ultimately for um, Shadow Garden Apartments to move forward. So ultimately being within the city limits, uh, it is our duty, it would be my understanding that we would hold that public hearing, uh, which is what we're doing at the moment. Yes, that's correct. It has to be. Yeah, the hearing has to take place in the jurisdiction in which the project is located. All right. Then thank you. I don't have any questions. Okay. You have a question, Ms. McCoy? Mr. Bagajalubi, this is Paul McCoy. Um, how long is the current ownership been with uh, with its with the current company or owner since 1981 um well i want to commend you i've uh since the turn of the century i've been waiting to say that around 1999 i started making regular visits there for my job <laughs> i continued after i retired in my new in uh endeavor uh in life to continue making um, rounds there, and I won't talk about what I did or anything like that. I they have really cleaned it up since I first started traveling there in the late '90s. They have done everything they can to clean it up. I know the world is not perfect, but I do want to commend the owners for um, doing as best they can to spiff up the area, um, make it safe and to um, make it more, what's the word I want to say, more, 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 pretty it up. You, you, you guys, they've done a great job. So I thank you for what you're trying to do and what you guys have done in the past. Well, I thank you for your uh, comments, council member. Uh, uh, part of that, uh, part of the accolades for the, the appearance of the property you did, uh, uh, you know, lies also with Michael's management, the property management company that we employ. So, you know, we, you know, through a partnership with Michael's, uh, you know, have have devised a process that, you know, has resulted in the, you know, the property looking incrementally better over the last several years. So uh, the substantial rehabilitation, we hope to uh, start this summer 
uh, with the financing that's the subject of this public hearing will ensure that uh, you know the uh, the property is further uh, further beautified uh, as well as uh, receives uh, you know some upgrades such as new flooring, new cabinets. Uh, lots of exterior upgrades to ensure that the project will be you know serviceable and provide affordable housing for tenants for years and years to come so but uh yeah part of that uh part of that accomplishment you know also lies with our property management company so i, I just want to recognize them well kudos to them i i enjoyed uh working with them when i've gone over and i did it for about 20 years so i appreciate that thank you Appreciate it. Thank you, Councilman McCoy. All right. Um, yeah, I would, this is Mayor Middleton. I would um, just concur that it has um, come a long ways in the past. And I think um, just moving forward with the projects you probably have intended just brings, uh, you know, the beautification of a property that's within our city, um, you know, pride is you know and what the ownership is and um and also for the residents that um, live there so thank you and with that there's no other questions from the council i will open up for public um hearing so please come to the podium and um write your name for the city clerk and address please My name is Tomari Autry, and um, I'm wanting to know this bond, do we put up the bond? Are we ensuring that this is, so if it doesn't get paid, the city pays it? And then I'm also wanting to know, after all this work is done on the inside of this building, is the rent going up? Because that's usually how it works. So how affordable is it going to be? Mr. Bachelupi, would you like to answer the... Uh... Actually, sure. I'll wait till everybody... That's one question, if you want to write that down um, from one of our citizens, and then I'll have their citizens come up, and then we'll an I'll have you answer their questions. So should I begin answering the questions? I, I'm sorry. Did you get that question written down? If not, we'll have it for you. Andrew, our attorney wrote it down, so we'll have it for you. Okay. Hi. My name is Debbie Bacigalupi from Montague, California. <laughs> and uh, no relation, I don't <laughs> believe. I'm, I'm, first of all, uh, I heard Mr. Bacigalupi say something about um, some of the money would be coming from the revenues of the project. And that just rang to me like a weird statement. And, and I'm probably way out of my wheelhouse here. But I did look up the chat, this project, and it says that back in 2020 and 21, um, it received over $4 million. So my question would be, if there is any money, I'm looking up how four million eight hundred and ninety thousand. It was that was the amount requested, and the amount re awarded was four million eight hundred and ninety thousand. So, if the city is, and and I don't know. Again, I'm out of my wheelhouse. But um, if, like the previous uh, speaker asked, is the city responsible for any financial thing here? And with that four million eight hundred ninety thousand that was already awarded, where did that money go? Okay, that's it for me. Any other public comment? Okay, I will close the public hearing. And we will go to the questions. Either our attorney, Mr. Andrew, uh, Jared will answer, or we will go to Mr. Bachigalupi if he has the answers for that. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, there's no obligation to the city 
on, on this bond. The reason why this is before you tonight is simply to provide a place where there can be a public hearing, literally a physical place here in the city um, and for the council to take action to verify that yes, indeed, a hearing has taken place. The public has had an opportunity to speak about this financing mechanism. It's a requirement under the Internal Revenue Code that this um, hearing happen. It is not by state law and um, there is no obligation of the city to pay back any of this money. It's not related to any city action. There's no obligation of the city to, um, to make any payment. That The responsibility for paying this back is simply a, uh, an obligation between the, the, the party um, uh, obtaining this money and the, um, the lending uh, or the, the bond agency. The city is not involved in this other than to host this this little party that we're having called the public hearing to verify that the, the, the city or the, the residents have had an opportunity to, to speak on, on whether or not financing should be provided. Thank you, Mr. Jared. And then the one question was about the $4 million some odd dollars um, they received back in 20 or 21. Yeah, I could. Yeah, so I will respond to that. So we applied uh, for the money, which is the State of California Home Program. Uh, we applied for that money in 2020, like a lot of uh, uh, you know financing sources receiving awards for affordable housing projects. It can be a protracted process to finally receive an award and secure that funding. So the money that we uh, started seeking from the state of California in 2020 uh, was actually finally awarded to us in 2023. I know that this is, uh, uh, but it was officially awarded uh, uh, to the project in early 2023. That project is, uh, that money, I sh should say, the $4,890,000 in the state of California home funds has not yet been spent. So it is uh, you know, remaining as one of three financing sources that will you know, cover the cost of the rehab. The other two uh, financing sources being the low income housing tax credit equity and the tax exempt financing that is the subject of this TEPRA hearing. So that's, that's some background on the $480,000, $490,000 in home funds. Hasn't been spent. And the State of California Department of Housing and Community Development will uh, will execute a standard loan agreement with us, uh, with uh, you know ample uh, safeguards and reporting requirements to ensure that the money is spent on the rehab as described to the department. So, okay. And then I think one other question was about um, with the project improvements that the rent was going to be increased and um, is the full, I'm familiar with tax credit and uh, income bearer properties. Uh, is the whole property um, tax credit or is it a percentage of it affordable? If you can answer that. It's a 100% affordable project and there will be no displacement of the existing tenants uh, that uh, currently reside in the property. So uh, there will not be an increase in rents. This isn't a market rate property. So, uh, so unlike some market rate properties where you know, often you see uh, it purchased and renovated and then uh, the property owner increasing the rents, uh, that's just not possible in terms of the economics of this project. So, so it's really the below market uh, financing, tax exempt financing, uh, as well as the home, the, the subsidized home funds, uh, in addition to the low income housing tax credit equity that, that provides the total funding package for the project. But uh, the rents will not increase uh, and the existing tenants will all be requalified and allowed to uh, uh, live in the project uh, after the rehabilitation is complete. So. All right. I think that was all the questions, correct? 
I think there was one other question oh. from Miss Debbie Bachigalupi about just the rents, I think, being utilized for uh, part of the project. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so the rent will be used to pay debt service on the tax exempt financing. So, uh, so yes, the, the project, the project revenues will, uh, yeah, will cover uh, some of the debt service on the property, the tax exempt bond financing, uh, the home funds, state of California home funds. Uh, they're also subject to a payment, what's called the residual receipts type of uh, financing where, uh, you know, each year subject to available, yeah, subject to available cash flow, uh, uh, the state of California usually receives 50% of available cash flow as the annual payment on the home loan. But, uh, so that's a, yeah, that's a high level view of how the debt, uh, you know, will be serviced uh, for the project, so. All right, thank you so much. Okay, <clears throat> now we will go, I'll go back to the city council to uh, deliberate and act on the item. Uh, the recommended city council action before you is adopt resolution 2024-13 of the city council of the city of Arica approving the issuance by the California statewide communities development authority of exempt facility bonds for a qualified residential rental project for the shadow garden apartments. Mr. Rupert? Mayor, yes. so moved. I have a motion to approve by Councilman Baker. I'll second it. I have a second from Councilman uh, Cake. I'm sorry. I will do roll call. Councilman Cake. Aye. Councilman Davis. Aye. Uh, Councilman Baker. Yes. Councilman McCoy. Yes. I, in the uh, 38 years I've lived here, the Shadow Guard Departments has allowed, has given housing to a lot of people who couldn't afford housing otherwise. Okay, thank you. And Mayor Middleton will be aye. The motion passes five to zero. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Bachelupi, for being with us tonight. Have a good evening. We look yes, forward to your yeah. project and the improvements you're going to make over there. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you to the council for taking care of this item, uh, you know, an important item, you know, along the, uh, the, the overall, uh, you know, roadmap to rehabbing this property. So appreciate the time and consideration. All right. Thank you. Have a good evening. Yes, you too. Thanks. And just a real quick uh, housekeeping is I want to remind our audience not to have conversations in the audience why we have a speaker or council is speaking or someone is at the podium. It is very distracting. If you want to have a conversation, I ask you to go outside. Thank you. Mr. Ledbetter. So this is um, item number 10, new business, city manager. This is Debbie Scott for agenda title item, Warica Farmers Market. <clears throat> This is reviewed Debbie Scott's proposal to host a Ryrica Farmers Market at a proposed location of downtown Miner Street every Friday from late May through late October of 2024. Mr. Ledbetter. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, Wairica City Council. This is Jason Ledbetter, the city manager. Uh, so recently, uh, Debbie Scott came to us with this uh, idea, proposal to really uh, start up the farmers market on Miner Street. She did a really nice presentation at a prior finance uh, committee meeting. And so in summary, Debbie Scott has submitted a proposal to revive the Wairika Farmers Market for the 2024 season. The goal of the series is to bring a successful market and lively atmosphere to downtown Wairika every Friday afternoon from late May through late October. And Debbie has demonstrated that the event aligns with the city's guiding principles for the 2044 general plan. The proposed location is downtown Miner Street due to the location's visibility to residents and those passing through. Accessibility and ample parking and its visually pleasant atmosphere. In addition to vendors, the market will host musicians, children's activities, educational booths, an area for resale of antique and collectible items, collaborations with other organizations, and theme days. Uh, Debbie also incorporated the results of a community survey she administered into her event proposal. 
Minor street merchants overwhelmingly favor a downtown farmer's market. So our benefit here is downtown vitality and tourism, supporting local agriculture and producers, promoting health and education, incubating small businesses. So the fiscal impact here, uh, Debbie Scott requests assistance from the Public Works Department for street closures during each farmer's market event. The cost of the staff time and equipment needed uh, for the requested street closers is estimated to be $525 per event for a grand total of $12,600 for the entire series annually. The event series falls uh, during two fiscal years, though. So use of $3,200 from fiscal year 23-24 and then $9,400 from fiscal year 24-25 from the city council community prom promotions funds budget would be requested. That money is already within your uh, budget currently. And so you would not be making an allocation. You already have this funding available if you, if you so choose to move forward. Uh, staff recommendation is a motion to approve the Wairika Farmers Market Event Series and direct the city manager to use $3,200 from the fiscal year 23-24 and $9,400 from the fiscal year 24-25 City Council Community Promotions Funds budget to support event operation costs. And now, without further ado, uh, what we've all showed up here today to do <laughs> is uh, listen to Debbie Scott and uh, Cindy Prohaska will pull up the uh, slideshow. So, Debbie? Okay. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. It's, you know, it's a long, long time. Great. So I'm not going to bore you guys with the presentation. Um, basically, Jason really outlined it perfectly. Uh, that's what we're shooting for. I think um, the merchants are in favor of it. Uh, the community's in favor of it. And I'm just hoping that the council is in favor of it. And I'm hoping that you guys are in favor of it. And what he said, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Do you have any questions or comments from the council before I open up to um, public comment? Make a comment. Councilman Cake. No questions, just comments. I, um, I read, looked through the whole presentation. It was great. Good job. Thank you. Um, I'm all for any community um, opportunities to involve the community, I should say, and bring back that public um, community spirit. Um, we, we've been lacking so much lately after the whole COVID ordeal. Um, we've been lacking a lot of um, the public being engaged and the community being engaged in a positive way. So this is an awesome opportunity to bring it back. Um, Minor Street has been struggling for years, we know that, but it's a, it's a good thing to see something come back to Minor Street. Um, at, when I was on the chamber, we did uh, um, work with them, work with the, uh, the uh, farmer's market and had it there. And to me, it was, seemed like it was a su real successful having it on Minor Street and stuff. So I just think it's a great opportunity to bring back some more vitality to the downtown area and bring back that community spirit and stuff too. So uh, thank you for doing that and putting all the time, you put a lot of time in this and I thank you for that. That's all I wanna say, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Thank you, Councilman Cake. <laughs> Councilman Baker. Uh, thank you so much, Mayor Middleton. And uh, full disclosure, I actually met with uh, Debbie Scott um, a couple of weeks ago at her request and she went over this proposal with me and I was really impressed. I asked her if she had been on a debate team at some point in her, <laughs> her, her life because I had lots of questions for her. <laughs> and um, I am very excited about this proposal. And um, I um, am supportive of it. But, but I'm also concerned about the one business that is not supportive of it because I feel that they have some valid reasons uh, for not being in support of it. And so I, you know, 
I, I just want to say that, that I am really concerned for that business. And uh, if this were, you know, once a week for a month or six weeks, um, that would be a lot more palatable to me um, in relationship to being, you know, concerned for that business. Um, but for several months, um, I just love the concept. I love the work that has been done. I'm very excited about it. I love farmers markets. I'm just concerned about the location. So thank you. Thank you, Councilman Baker. Councilman Davis. Absolutely. Uh, being a minor street X merchant, I understand about the closed street and foot traffic and all of that. Um, I, I went down Saturday and spoke to several of the merchants and I spoke to the one we're talking uh, about the uh, wheelchair ADA compliance stuff. Um, there may be a way to work that out with the, I suggested to Mr. Ledbetter that we attempt to help there if we decide to go forward with this farmer's market. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is, I've always noticed that when we've had things on the street, the bathroom use is an issue. And I, I'm not really the greatest of all bathroom. Excuse me. You violated our own rules. <laughs> um, I have those babies set up so they go right into my hearing aids and it just sounds like a bell house when they go <laughs> off. So I have to stop. I'm sorry. But anyway, the bathroom use, and sometimes the bathroom is pretty negative when you get done with that. And I, and I hope, uh, Debbie, you've kind of worked that out a little bit because that is a concern. Um, the other concern is that it's, like Ms. Baker said, it's for six months, um, and it's every Friday afternoon. You know, that's a that's a lot. Um, but I got to say, I was down there Saturday, and I didn't have anybody with concerns other than the uh, wheelchair access to their business. So maybe it's something that we can start and revisit it a few months down the road and see if it's working. Um, that's kind of where I think. That's what I think. Thank you, Councilman Davis. <clears throat> Councilman McCoy? No? Okay. Um, I will state that I did um, meet with Ms. Scott as well on a Friday. I guess it's been a couple weeks ago. Time flies. Week, I don't know. I don't know what day it is right now. It's been hectic. And um, I support the project, and I'll be very transparent on why. When I moved back here after being gone for 14 years in Sacramento, I've been back for seven coming up. Um, I experienced Sacramento and their farmer's market. I know it's on another scale, but they closed Capitol Mall. They closed many streets during the week, during the day from big streets from 11 or actually 10 to like three o'clock. You have vendors galore and it's closed. And the businesses, people walking from, you know, their homes, other businesses, um, but the idea is that I hope the business that we are talking about, that they benefit from the people, citizens coming downtown to support our local agriculture and our vendors. And one of the questions on the um, general plan was what our citizens would like to see and a majority of the percentage would like to see more farmers market, knowing where their food come from, come from and um, access to fruits and vegetables and other homemade items. And um, when I first moved back and was coming up with ideas, I was faced with a lot of backlash. It's like, we tried that 15 years ago and it didn't work. Well, maybe it's time we try it and open it up. And most of the farmer's market I would go to, whether it be in Chico, Sacramento, other bigger cities, just a great turnout. And then they're downtown, your downtown core. And uh, just booming with people buying 
breads, vegetables, jams, what have you. Um, art, you know, just very um, positive experience in other areas. And I, you know, we're not as big as that, but doesn't hurt us to try. And uh, I'm very excited the time you put in. I'm very excited to see this um, come forward. I hope you, um, if that does move forward with this council, I hope that many vendors support you. I hope to see the trees, uh, streets packed with um, many farmers, ranchers, artists, what have you, that just come out and um, give the citizens, I think, what they want. So I commend you on the hard work and the idea finally in front of me after all these years of just being told, no, we tried this. I was faced with a lot of backlash coming back with different ideas to the town and still am, but that's okay. We keep pushing forward. So with that said, I will go to public comment regarding the farmer's market on downtown Miner Street proposed for Friday evenings. What's that? I said actually afternoon. Oh, three to six. <laughs> late afternoon, early evening. <laughs> My name is Laura Lee Wallace. I'm out in Montague. I run a online goat milk soap business and have participated in the weed farmers market and sold locally through a retail shop. COVID did a lot of things to me. And I kind of had to back off of my soap business for a while. <clears throat> because I lost my job and I had to go work at Rayleigh's and I had to work multiple jobs. And I am back into my soap. I spoke out a lot about freedoms during COVID and a lot about people learning where their food comes from, where their skincare products from, come from supporting their local agriculture, learning who their farmer was, where are you getting your food from? Does your farmer align with your ideas? And a farmer's market is the greatest opportunity for people to figure out where their food is coming from, why it matters where their food is coming from, where their skincare products come from, and why it should matter. We have more cows in this community than we have people. And we should be supporting the businesses that are raising those cows. We hear a lot about climate change and how cows and their farting is killing our environment. And we need to have our farmers on street markets where they can educate people about what real climate change is and how our cows are actually sequestering carbon. And these things are important and we do that through a farmer's market. Farmer's markets are one of the most important things that we can do for our community and opening it up in downtown supports the downtown businesses. I realize it can be difficult because of parking and things like that, but you have a whole bunch of people coming down there to buy from their farmer's markets. They're gonna go into coffee shops and drink coffee. They might go out to dinner after they shop. I think it's a really good idea and I hope this, I hope the council will support it. Thank you. Good evening council again. Um, I'm not gonna to take too much. I just wanna strongly support what Debbie's done. I've seen her firsthand. Uh, she's taught herself what she needed to do. She's executed what she's needed to do. And she's done a tremendous job for free to support something that I don't, how could you say no? Um, congratulations. Really, you've done a tremendous job. Um, I brought this stuff up with me because this should be a drop the mic moment for you. You guys have a good time. <laughs> Thank you. John Michael Patterson, and I would want to say support Debbie's idea. Sure, there may be a little bit more development going on that needs after this point has passed. But as someone who's lived in Wairika a long time, been to a lot of the businesses down on the street and involved with one organization that is on Miner Street that has a business, and being there when we did have the farmer's market on Miner Street before, even though it may have been in another part, it did bring a lot more foot traffic to those businesses. And as someone that also helps run one of the food banks in town, 
we as an organization support Debbie's push for this. And I had so many other thoughts in my head and I forgot what they were. <laughs> but just saying, even though there's one business that's against it, getting their reasons is great, but you have to look at, like someone else said, what majority want and what the citizens want. Maybe if there is a test run for a certain number of weeks to see if it works, but we have to get our farmer's market back. I believe we're the only town in the county that did have a farmer's market that doesn't have it currently. Look at Aetna, Weed, Mount Shasta. They're all over the place. Theirs are big and getting bigger. Whereas we don't have one and it's getting close to that time. And when it was out at the fairgrounds, we're talking about bathroom situations. Any of the time I went out there, I don't ever recall seeing a bathroom when it was out at the fairgrounds. It was out in the sun, it was out in the dust, the dirt. If Cal Fire, someone needed to claim the fairgrounds for an incident command post, it was gone. So I say support it. We support it at the Wairika Food Bank and keep all those thoughts in mind too. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> From one guy that's been a fixture since 1970, in 1963, coming here, 50 years in business. Wairika in the old days, and I won't bore you, but was uh, great. We had timber fallers, we had 700, 800 people working in the mills. It was excitement. Radio station, my God, we even had a TV station for a while. And then we had Gary and Shree Hawk that were live wires with the radio station. And we were blessed and didn't know it. But anything we can do that's legal to add excitement to this town, God help us, and get back a, a active chamber and uh, some other things. And it's uh, as our dear departed friend Larry Bacon and Bob and we we were blessed. And that's all I want to say. And I want to thank Debbie for stepping up to fill those shoes. And uh, I recommend it. So thank you. Thank you so uh, much. Excuse me, I need his name, please. I'm sorry. I need his name for the record. Oh, please. I'm sorry. Can you state your name for the record? Gil Foster. Oh, Gil Foster. Yes. I didn't recognize you, Gil. How are you doing? <laughs> Hi, I'm Sean Casarotti. I live at 808 Hillcrest. Um, <laughs> when I first moved to Wairica, I came from Silicon Valley, really exciting happening place. I was expecting to stay here for a few months, maybe a year, and then move on and go to someplace better. That was 22 years ago. This town is awesome. You used to have the concerts in the park. There used to be a lot of activities that were community related, and those have all gone away. Those were part of what made Wairika so awesome. I deal with people from all over the world every day and when we talk about the things that we do here in the in the community, they're always impressed. They they don't have these things in other countries, and they really do treasure it. I think we have an opportunity for something special, and we should take advantage of it. Personally, I'm not a fan of just giving it a six week try. I think we need six to however many months we can. If we can do it for two years in a row, I think that would be great. It needs time to kind of mature and grow organically. Um, and to your comment about the bathrooms, I totally understand it. When you have more people in the traffic area, you're going to have more use of the bathroom. It's a function of extra business. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. We'll remind everybody not to leave after this big of it, or this big, uh, what they're here for, because we do have the concerts in the park and some other things on the next item, so discussion. So we would invite you to stick around and participate. Elmer Yachtry. Um, to begin with, I wanted to say, you know, we talked about not subsidizing <laughs> every single thing that came across. And... And I still agree with that, but to uh, but I also support farmers market. I thought <coughs> that be, 
having it at Meyer Street Park would be better, cooler for the vendors. But I get Meyer Street and where it should be. I get that. And I wish you the best. But I think that helping this stand up one year, good. After that, it's a poor for for profit event. And these for profit events need to get vendor fees. I ran Saturday market. I know how it works. You get the vendor fees and they pay for all of these. So one year I'm good with and I'll support it. Thank you, Don Marie. Do we have another? Uh... If you could just step up and state your name again and thank you for being patient. Yes, Henry Lancaster from 504 North Street. I am with the Freemasons as well as the, in the city. And since we are on Minor Street, I give our full support for the farmer's market. Because honestly, I might be one of the last of the Masons. There's so few of us left. And having an event like that to come in and maybe help boost our numbers would be like maybe the one thing that could save our temple. Like, I'm not joking. They were about to close the temple last night. If, if I could just ask you to direct towards us uh, so we can hear you, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I'm in support because it could truly save us having those people because I can go down and help and help recruit for us, you know? Because I'm literally the only up and coming master. There's nobody else. Yeah. But thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hi there, my name is Kimberly O'Neill and I own Lana Mays um, on 326 West Minor Street. And I just wanted to say that I'm very much in support of having this farmer's market. Um, I think it's important that it's downtown. And I also think that um, it just brings a sense of community. And I think that that's something we really need. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm Bonnie Wood. I live on five five one two seven Easy Street, and um, I just want to talk about um, the span of time that is being requested of roughly six months. Um, as somebody who grows and has been a vendor at the farmers market, um, we have very interesting seasons here in Siskiyou <laughs> County. Um, there's a saying, plant early, plant often, which means that, you know, you never know if your crop's gonna freeze. Um, you may have to plant several times. Um, if you shorten a farmer's market to less than six months, in my mind, you're going to be losing access to a lot of produce that comes in late or comes in early or, or whatever the case may be. So uh, I really believe that the time span that Debbie has outlined really takes into account what the people who grow food require in this county in order to bring produce to people. So uh, I'm for the six months. Thank you. My name's Kathleen Bradner. I'm the owner, co-owner of uh, Minor Street Mercantile at 315 West Minor Street. And uh, I'd love to see a farmer's market on Minor Street. And I think it's gonna help us a lot. It'll get the people downtown. And if they have it for a long period of time, people will come back and they'll know it's there and they'll depend on it. If it's just a short time, then they're gonna just forget about it. And, you know, Minor Street and all historic downtown needs people. And this is gonna bring everybody into our businesses. And if they wanna use my bathroom, so be it. Come in and I'll let you, because <laughs> I'm happy with that. <laughs> I'm not gonna turn anybody away because people do need, need a bathroom. And it'd be nice if they could get an extra bathroom for, you know, those people that are gonna spend some time but it should be an event. And then we have a lot of travelers that come in our business. And if they happen to be here when that happens, I think it's just gonna make them wanna come back. 
So anything that we can drive people to Minor Street and Broadway and any of those streets would be fantastic. And I hope you guys really keep that in mind for the businesses that are there because we're not, I'm not against it. And if there's a parking issue, there's parking behind our business. On a lot of this, on either side of the street, there's parking behind. You know, maybe some of the parking isn't pristine right in front of the business, but there's a lot of traffic and a lot of the, you know, a lot of the trap, a lot of the, a lot of the parking is taken up anyway, regardless. So, you know, if they, if we had a place where people could walk around and see the businesses and not fight the traffic, that would be nice. So, anyway, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Debbie Bacigalippi, Montague, California. I don't know if any of you were able to make our the cattle women's uh, shutdown of Minor Street and the dinner there. It was awesome. It was fun. It was packed. Um, and it brought back like, wow, we really need community again because it's been people are just exhausted and tired and and it's bringing people together, which this does, that makes such a huge difference for the spirit of who we are and what Wairika, we know Wairika could be and, and what Gil described as what once was. And I've known Debbie for many, many years now. Um, she is my pastor's wife and she's committed. She had a successful business on Minor Street, Zephyr Bookstore. She's a great She's great with customer service. And for her, someone to take this on, obviously they do not want it to fail. And so I just want to say that, gosh, if I were to have somebody to take on such a big project, it would be someone like Debbie, who's committed to the community already having a business here, but also committed to uh, the community of Montague in, as, as the youth leader of our church. So I hope that helps make a difference in, in your choice that, man, you've got a great person here who's committed to making it a success. And I know it's a big, it, it's a big to do. And, uh, as a corporate event planner, this is huge. And, um, so anyway, thank you for doing this. Thank you all for considering it. I hope you're a yes. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, hello, uh, my name is Sean Locker. I am uh, the owner of Sour House Farms in Etna, California. And uh, I did participate in the market last year. And I uh, participated in markets all over the county. And it was probably the most difficult one. It was the, um, it was hot, you know, it was a, it's a really bad location. Uh, just not e anywhere near downtown. And uh, so I really want to encourage you to, to take this up. It's a great idea. I'm so glad that uh, somebody brought this forward because we were all talking about it last year and we barely had a market manager. And um, that's one thing that would really help is to have a, um, like I don't mind paying vendor fees. I think it's that's fine, that's kind of expected. But I think the vendor fees should go toward a full-time market manager position and even some money for musicians, because there's a lot of talented musicians and music makes it festive. And I think it's great that you guys are all sounding very supportive of this, the community came out and it's great. Um, I plan to be there every week and uh, bringing lots of uh, diverse organic vegetables. And I think there's a lot of people, if it's consistent throughout the season, They'll make a commitment to it and they'll be here every week, but it can't just be for six weeks. That would be a mistake. Thank you so much. Good night. Uh, good evening, city council. Uh, I don't never done this before. Um, my name is Andrew Alvarado. I live off minor street and um, I I'm from Ventura originally. I've been here uh, about five years. 
and uh, recently married, and I'm looking to start a business here. Uh, I'm an aspiring regenerative farmer. I'm very into uh, sustainable agriculture and local food. Um, and I'm very, very in support of Debbie's uh, whole project, her whole proposal. Uh, incubator businesses is something she mentioned last uh, time she met with you guys. And uh, I support it. And uh, like I said, I'm still have a day job. Uh, I, but um, I dream of being able to be here at the farmer's market and be a potential vendor. And uh, not having something like that for the community is something that makes a young couple like me and my wife think of, well, maybe we should go to another area. And I love this community. I appreciate you guys are here for everyone. And uh, a lot of you seem in favor of it. A lot of you seem, um, well, like like you, Mr. Mayor uh, Middleton, I'm grateful for all that you said. And uh, I hope you guys bring it to, to fruition, hopefully this year or maybe next year. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good evening. I'm Heather Cipollone. I'm with Siskiyou Economic Development Council and Discover Siskiyou. And I did just want to express our support of the downtown farmers market. Um, we do believe that growing our local food economies will help revitalize our downtowns. And on the tourism side, we're also seeing an increased interest in food experiences. And so we think this will definitely make Wairika a lot more attractive um, to tourists. We've heard from a number of our lodging properties that they are in favor of this also. So just wanted to let you all know that. And then kind of taking off my EDC hat, um, my husband and I are um, in the process of opening a business on Minor Street. And so we did want to express our support as business owners as well. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Hi, uh, I'm Danielle Cannon. Uh, recently returned uh, to Wairika after growing up here. Uh, like Corey Middleton, I was gone for ooh, nearly two decades and I just got back in August. And in October, it was my pleasure uh, to benefit from Guy and Debbie's incredible work over at Zephyr Books and Coffee and take that over. Um, it's been a wonderful experience being in downtown Wairika. Um, I wanted to speak a little bit to the practicality, like sort of what, what the data actually says about street closures in terms of uh, how businesses thrive after them. Um, there's been, there was a lot of data around cities that participated in street closures during the pandemic, which I know is the time which shall not be named, but uh, <laughs> the fact is that a lot of city uh, restaurants and businesses were very, very concerned about street closures and they had every right to be. But the data that was born out of a lot of those cities ended up being that the streets with the most, clo with the closures ended up being the most successful. So a lot of major cities like New York, Santa Barbara, LA ended up seeing restaurant closures uh, in mass, but not on streets where there was foot traffic instead of cars. Uh, they found that actually there was a massive increase in uh, especially restaurants, but other businesses as well, uh, because the food, foot traffic was way more important in terms of getting people downtown and staying downtown than the parking spaces. Um, and I've seen that not just in major cities, but I lived in a small town in Southern California called Carpinteria, and it's tucked between uh, Ventura and Santa Barbara. 7,000 people, they closed it every week for the summer, and it drew so many people in from both Santa Barbara and Ventura, which have their own farmer's markets. But there's something really, I think, precious about a centralized small town downtown like we have. I mean, Minor Street is gorgeous. It's so sweet. And it's two blocks off the freeway. And I think another men merchant mentioned, but we get so much traffic from people who are driving down I-5 and what they do, I asked them about it. They looked it up and they find out we're a historic city and we're so much closer to the freeway than Mount Shasta or Ashland. Even though those are more well-known towns, they stop in our city instead. And having an all afternoon event like that, I really think would drive people to even more than that, come downtown for that. 
Um, we also lived in a small town called Los Altos. They did the same thing. It was in the Bay Area. There's a million cities with millions of people, literally millions of people. And people came to this seven or 8,000 person town for their downtown. Everybody loved the Los Altos market because it was sweet and small and it just drew people in. Um, some people have talked about young people. Uh, some people have talked about older people who've been here for a long time. I asked a barista of mine how many people, or what she does on the weekends for fun. She told me she walks around Walmart. So <laughs> I guess I'm saying this is an opportunity for our community to get to showcase all these incredible farmers, all these incredible merchants. We get to support burgeoning small businesses and we get to bring them into our downtown and make a central place for people to build community. I overhear conversations in the coffee shop about loneliness all the time. People who are looking for friendship, people who are looking for connection, they don't know what to do or where to go. And I think that this is a really special opportunity to invest in our community in a major, major way. This is a moment we can decide, or you guys can decide as leadership to support building something new in our town. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody else? All right. I will close public comment. Thank you. A lot of great speakers tonight. Okay. So I'll go back to the council. We've heard from a lot of citizens, a lot of merchants uh, about the Rekha Farmers Market being um, proposed downtown. So the recommended city council action before you is the motion to approve the Rekha Farmers Market event series at the proposed location of downtown Minor Street and direct city manager to use $3,200 from the FY23 slash 24 and 9400 dollars from the FY2425 City Council Community Promotions Funds budget to support event and operation costs. What are the wishes of the council? I'll make the motion. Council McCain. as presented. I'll second the motion. Okay. <laughs> I have Councilman Cake with the motion to approve and a second from Councilman Baker. I'll go for roll call. Councilman Cake. Aye. Councilman Davis. Aye. Councilman Baker. Yes. Councilman Pro Tem McCoy. Aye. And I for Mayor Middleton. So the motion passes five to zero. Congratulations. So we look forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's what we like to see. So our next, we invite you all to stay, um, <laughs> exactly. please. Don't um, leave. Don't leave, because this ties into a lot of what we're talking about, about socializing and events and getting people out. Uh -huh. uh, so this is, um, uh, I'm sorry. OK. This is item B, agenda title. This is Siskiyou Economic Development Council Reich Events Proposal. If I can just have you be quiet, I'm sorry. Just have people quiet down a little bit. I'm sorry. Okay, so this is uh, City Manager Discover Siskiyou. This item B agenda title: Siskiyou Economic Development Council Warwick Events Proposal. Discover Discover Siskiyou has presented a plan to manage the Night of Lights event, the Heritage Days event, and manage three concerts and the parks events at Minor Street Park. Discover Discover Siskiyou would be planning each of these events with the intention of having a regional interest that would encourage attendance from the surrounding areas to increase lodging stays during each event. Mr. Ledbetter. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor Wairika City Council. This is Jason Ledbetter, the city manager. Um, our, um, our clerk, Cindy Prohaska, is pulling up some uh, marketing material from a prior event. So when that starts to play, uh, I will kind of fade out and finish out uh my introduction here here we go <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you for that, Cindy. So uh, back to the discussion tonight. So Discover Siskiyou utilizes the tourist Tourism Business Improvement District, the TBID, a tax applied to lodging properties in Siskiyou County in the participating incorporated cities to market the area for tourism and to drive more stays at lodging properties. Uh, Discover Siskiyou has presented a plan to manage the Night of Lights event, uh, the Heritage Days event, and to manage three concert and the park events at Miner Street Park. <clears throat> Discover Siskiyou would be planning each of these events with the intention of having a regional interest that would encourage attendance from surrounding areas to increase lodging stays uh, during each event. After the Wairika Chamber of Commerce disbanded and the disruption to events during COVID ceased, the city of Wairika reached out to Discover Siskiyou to facilitate the Night of Lights and Gold Rush Day events. Uh, it is the staff's understanding that when the Wairika Chamber of Commerce was active, the chamber managed the Night of Lights, the Holiday Parade, in the Gold Rush Day event or events as part of the contract with the city of Wairika. Discover Siskiyou has now managed the Night of Lights event in Wairika twice, 22 and 23, as well as the 23 Gold Rush Day event. City staff has had many inquiries into whether the concert in the park series will come back to Minor Street Park and Discover Siskiyou is proposing to facilitate the return of the concert in the park events as well as to continue to manage the Night of Lights and expanding Gold Rush Days into Heritage Days. A resolution will need to be approved for the Night of Lights and Heritage events if the council chooses to move forward with this proposal. Uh, a resolution would be brought back for uh, each year for each of these two events to determine the street closures, closures and the other uh, ordinances or muni code uh, changes that would have to be altered for those events. Now the fiscal impact here for uh, the fiscal year that we're in would really just include the Heritage Day event and one concert in the parks within this fiscal year. And that would be uh, from the proposal $35,000. And you do have that money budgeted in the city council community promotion funds budget. Uh, and then the following year, respectively, we have some different costs if you were to move forward. In 2425, it would be $72,200. And in 2526, $74,350. Uh, so, staff is recommending that you move forward with this proposal that the council make a motion to approve the Discover Siskiyou City of Wairika events proposal 2024 through 2026. And direct city manager to use $35,000 from, $35, from the city council community promotions fund budget for the 2024 Wairika Heritage event and one concert in the park event for fiscal year 2023-2024. And now I'm going to ask uh, Heather Cipollone. Is that correct? I want to say Heather Dodds, but uh, uh, she's going to come up and present and answer questions. And I am going to turn the air conditioning back on. <laughs> we were cold up here for a minute. Thanks. Now I'm warm. You get a yes vote from the audience on that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm Heather Cipollone. This is my colleague, Amanda, and um, we're here to answer any questions you might have about the proposal. Okay. Is the um, I'll just ask is the the video we saw speak for itself, or would you like to elaborate a little bit on the events and the success of the events we've had? I've visited them, I know they're very successful that you have put on, like the Night of Lights, sure. and then the Gold Rush Days was you did the Gold Rush Days last year, yes, right? yeah. yeah, yeah. So, do you want to talk about the success of those and uh, what you learned going on maybe in the future, maybe with everybody? And then, then I'll go to the council for questions and public comment. Sure. Um, so I think I'll start with Gold Rush Days. Um, last year was our first year doing that event. And I think the two major changes we did was we made it a two day event. Um, like city manager Ledbetter said, um, you know, we serve the lodging properties. And so when we can have multi day events, that tends to lead to more overnight stays, which is always our goal. Um, we saw, was it 7,500 visits? We looked it up right before oh, this, um, 4,500, which was almost double, um, the year before, which was an awesome increase. Um, we heard a lot of positive feedback from the community about that. Um, we do calculate economic impact. I should have that number with me. Um, but I can look it up for you, but, um, 
yeah, we basically calculate that locals spend an average of about $25 a day at a local event and out of towners spend about a hundred. And that's pretty conservative, you know, considering lodging and food and everything. And so, you know, multiply that by 4,500 people. That's, um, pretty considerable. And we did see 47% of the participants in Gold Rush Days come from outside of the Wairika community, which is great to see. Um, Night of Lights, I think the major change on that event was we switched the date. Um, typically that event was the same weekend as the holiday parade, but we did um, shift weekends for that. Again, our lodging properties um, tend to be pretty full during the holidays. And, you know, keeping that in mind, we wanted to stretch the event um, into a separate weekend um, that might benefit them more, as well as our downtown merchants, too. If we can have two weekends when there's a ton of people out there on foot in front of their shop, um, you know, we think that that benefits them as well. Um, again, we saw an increase in visits. Last year was a little tough with the rain, but honestly, our visits were hardly even down. That was our second year doing it we barely saw a dip in visits and the people who came out came out still had a great time um and then the concerts in the park um you'll see in the proposal they're not as frequent as the concerts used to be i actually um used to work on that event with val jerub who is in the audience today as well um we would love to get that event back to every friday in the summer but i think it's really important that we maybe start smaller and do it really well. And, you know, we really want to kind of gauge the community support. We hear anecdotally that there's a lot of community support out there. And if that's true, I think that we could grow that event um, into, you know, what it was before. And so I think that's our ultimate goal. Again, our lodging properties, even though that isn't an overnight event, they have expressed overwhelming support you know it's just it's a destination development tactic it's something for visitors to do when they're in town even people in town on business that might not venture downtown if there's life you know on minor street and in the park i might encourage them um, to stay longer or you know come into downtown so yeah great <laughs> sounds good <laughs> um Okay, I will open up the council for any questions or comments for this is economic development. <clears throat> development. Want to go first? Why not? Sure. <laughs> you <tell somebody. laughs> uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Middleton. And uh, I actually have a, a question for our city manager. And um, I don't know if this is really an appropriate time to discuss this, but I would like to put it out on the table that since I've been on council, there has been a lot of discussion over what is a city sponsored event versus what is not a city sponsored event. And there's been a lot of discussion around uh, this, uh, this uh, podium, this table here about that. And I'm just, curious if we could have some definitions about what a city sponsored event is versus a non city sponsored event. Yeah, I think that's a, this is a great time to have this discussion, <laughs> I, in my opinion, because I am, um, it's a little cloudy for me as well. And so the first time I had heard the verbiage of city sponsored event was uh, maybe a couple months before a gold rush days was supposed to happen or a night of lights and there was nobody to put it on. And I think that it was the prior council. And at that point, there was a broad discussion and there seemed to be consensus at that point that whatever was in the chamber contract was considered a city event. And so that would be everything, remove the concert in the parks because at that point we had um, Scott Valley Bank was putting those on. Uh, so you had Night of Lights, Gold Rush Days, and the Holiday Parade, I believe. But I think Mr. Keg might be able to answer more of that. And I know that in the, we've had deeper conversations about this as we try to create policies over the cost and what the city should subsidize for events. And I know in the finance committee meetings, we've been kind of um, come to a crossroads on this very question. And I think you guys have an opportunity if you were to move forward tonight to maybe start defining and really as we work in the finance committee, I think we talked about a policy, but there could be just a real definition to what the city events uh, really are. And then possibly in finance, we can start to make a policy around, well, those are the city events. We will not subsidize any other events hypothetically, but 
there's no real true definition in my opinion i don't believe there's a, a, an ordinance or a muni code i think the idea of city events comes specifically from the chamber contract that no longer exists but i would really defer to mr keg on that well thank you but <laughs> being part of the chamber for a number of years yeah that was there was just kind of a, a more of an understanding that um, there was nothing really defined in any ordinance or any any paperwork on that there was a, a contract with the city of Wairika when I was on the chamber the city of Wairika and the chamber of commerce that those three events that he stated the night of lights the parade and uh, gold rush days were ma basically mandatory for the chamber to put them on and they were basically a city sponsored event um, other ones that were encouraged as I discussed last time was uh, the um, the um, I was going to spit it out here in a second um, was the citizen of the year mm -hmm. and business of the year and, and nonprofit of the year and stuff like that. Those were also another one that was encouraged by the city, but it wasn't a mandatory thing that the city um, implemented on the chamber of commerce at that point in time. Um, but yeah, there was, it was with that contract that the city did with the chamber of commerce, that it was in that contract that the money that the, the, the chamber received, um, which varied over years, but, um, the money that they received, that it was mandatory for the chamber to do those events. So it kind of pulled, rolled over into a, a city sponsored thing because the city was making it mandatory for the chamber to do those events because of the money that was subsidized to the chamber from the city. So that's pretty much all I can um, evaluate or elaborate on that and give you some idea that that's what, but there was never anything that was really concrete. It was always the, the council um, made that decision. And we've done that as a previous council, me sitting on this side of it too, made that, you know, made that distinguishing points that we wanted certain events put on and that's why like I said why I brought it up the last time of uh, the citizen of the year and stuff to bring back that <coughs> to the city and bring back that um, to the public, you know, to where we can bring that and have everybody, you know, join in and bring more, you know, community spirit and bring that back. So, yeah, um, I, I agree that I think that's something that this council, all of us need to decide on if that's something that we want as a, as a mandatory thing. Um, we always had the luxury before of having the chamber of commerce, you know, running that. So it made it a little easier to put those stipulations on a, in a contract, but there's nothing that's really set in stone, but I would, yeah, I encourage the rest of the council to get on board um, and let's do something about it then and make a decision on that. So thank you. Thank you. So I do think it's really important that we as a council define what a city sponsored event is. And then those are the events that the city sponsors and the city subsidizes and uh, I am really excited about this proposal I um, really enjoy the concerts in the park and I hope that you guys would do your best to find um, entertainment that has ties uh, to us locally and I've got a couple of ideas for you um, but um, and then I see uh, the idea of rebranding Gold Rush Days and calling it Wairika, a Wairika heritage event. I have to tell you that Gold Rush Days to me sounds a lot more exciting than Wairika heritage, but I understand the concept of what you're trying to do is to expand uh, some um, include. I can't even say the word tonight. You'll have to forgive me. It's been a long day um, to make this a more inclusive event. I, I get that idea and I support it. I'm just not crazy about Wairika Heritage event. <laughs> so we would come up with a better name. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking some, yeah. <laughs> We're actually open to it. Yes. Well. So, um, and uh, if this, uh, I brought this up uh, last time we discussed this, I'm going to bring it up again because to me it's very, very important. It's very important to me that if this is a family event and it's in the paperwork that this is defined as a family friendly event, I think it's so important that we model to our younger generations that we don't need to have alcohol at events to have fun especially when you look around our streets these days and it seems like there is a lot of um, visible addiction and visible um, 
mental health issues. Um, and I would really like to see this be a dry event, especially if the city's sponsoring it. So that's my input. Thank you. Um, maybe this is a, a question, but piggybacking. And I refer to Sacramento because I was there for a long time. That's where my residence was. So when different events were downtown and they would have like a banner and it never said sponsored, it always said in partnership with, and it rather it said Sacramento Chamber, the city of Sacramento. Is there a difference that defines in partnership or a sponsored event? Yeah, I think what we're talking about is in the finance committee, when we meet periodically, one of the main items that we are discussing recurringly with our planning manager, Alia, is the cost of these events, whether it be somebody else's idea or our idea, and what the city, what that cost is to the city. And so I think ultimately what we're saying, whether it's a sponsorship or any other name, is that there's a commitment that these events must go on that we've contracted with someone and that we will subsidize them financially and that the rest of the events will have to really prove themselves out in the uh, private market, hypothetically, where they would not receive um, public works road closure for free. It would be expected that the, whoever wanted to do their own event would pay for those things. So whether you call it a city event or city sponsored or really city subsidized, I think that's what we're talking about is that there's okay. a financial obligation from the city for the event to take place and we're struggling quite frankly with the policy and we're we're doing a lot of due diligence i think we will articulate a policy and it will come before this council um but if we i think it benefits the city if they do have city events that ultimately there's the commitment that's the money that's where we're putting it and then in the future, anyone else that has any other great ideas, we would expect that they would pay for their own event. I hope that makes sense. It does. Thank you. Okay. Other questions or comments from council members? Council Member McCoy. Um, so um, I, I want to thank Valerie Jareb for being here. Um, Valerie <laughs> was a driving force at Scott Valley Bank behind the... Uh, Behind the concerts in the park, and we do appreciate that. We would strive to do something. We'd like to strive to do something like Valerie did. Um, um, has have you approached the credit union as of yet in regards to being a sponsor? We have been awaiting the council's decision, <laughs> but we do plan to. Um, uh, I I would we have approached them in, for all of our previous events. Yes. I would I would highly advise you. At, in, after the month of June to approach. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, and I'd be glad to talk to you, you know, but I, I would, I would, because I think the credit union, even now, would like to be involved, but now's not a good time as far as, yeah. as far as uh, things go, are going, not, not financially, just yeah. with a change in, um, I would like to see um, food vendors permitted by the city and when i say permitted they can pay for their permit and be able to serve at the right there on minor street it's happened before mm -hmm. um I, I believe it's i i i unless i'm going to see now i think i went to one or two concerts where they actually had some yeah. food there mm -hmm. so I, I would like to see that if we're going to do that and I, I appreciate that you're looking at free concerts eventually um let's not lose sight of the fact that this council gave somewhere in the neighborhood of seventy-five dollars to $85,000 annually to a chamber of commerce that I'm not gonna pick on, but um, we can do better with that seventy-five dollars to $85,000 and give it to a chamber of commerce who then comes and asks us for more and more money. So I would support this. Thank you, Councilman McCoy. Councilman Davis, any questions or comments? Sure. I, I think um, the Chamber of Commerce did a little more than just sponsor these events or, or guide us. And, you know, they had a webpage that had businesses on it. And 
and they had people in the office to receive phone calls and talk about the businesses. Um, I, I, don't, I don't really want to get into that point, but um, this event that you have, the Wairika Heritage event, um, that's on a Saturday and a Sunday. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Is there, uh, is this kind of a rough thing? I don't suppose, are the businesses involved in this? The local downtown merchants? Yes, so last year we did meet um, fairly regularly with the merchants um, to talk about, I, know, I believe, did they get free booth space? We worked with them on having you know space outside of their business if they wished. Um, we helped kind of brainstorm ways to encourage foot traffic into the businesses. Um, we did receive feedback that they preferred Father's Day weekend um, for that event. And so we're looking at, you know, last year we tried doing it a different date. And so, um, you know, we're taking that into account and proposing to do it Father's Day weekend again. Um, but yeah, we are definitely committed to working closely with the merchants because we want this to benefit them. I thought it was quite successful when you did it on Father's Day weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a good touch, I thought. Thank you for that. And the concerts in the park, that was a big deal. Yeah. It was a seriously big deal. And I, I really think that's a good idea to bring that back. Mm -hmm. I can remember going up there and enjoying some local tunes, mm -hmm. as Baker has said. Um, I think... Um, I kind of support her in the use of alcohol on the streets if it's a family event. So maybe if you haven't looked into that, you probably can. Just my feeling. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilman Davis. Councilman McKay. Um, Yeah, I just want to thank you guys for putting it on again. Um, it's a big endeavor. <clears throat> Having to put it on in the past myself, it's. It's a lot of work, a lot of work. Any of these events, a night of lights is a lot of work. Uh, any events that go into these, um, into the city, it's been a lot of work. So thank you for doing that. Um, I do like the idea of, this, especially the concert in the park, because we've, in the past, my business has sponsored the concert in the parks, and we've went to it numerous times, and we bring people with us, my employees, we bring, you know, other people, we sit there, relax, have dinner, you know, take out dinner, probably it's some sort and sit there and relax but it's very much needed for that um, community spirit again of like i've been talking about so thank you um i do like the idea that i mentioned it last time of the cornhole mm -hmm. i do like that <laughs> that's a huge event i'll tell you what um we actually have well i know one local youngster um here that went pro just recently oh. Yeah, the, and so cornhole is actually a huge event all over, and they can make some big money on it. So I don't know, was it a sanctioned event? You didn't do a sanctioned event last year, did you? Was it separate company? It's it like was, a yeah. It, I actually think it might have been a sanctioned event. We went through a company out of Oregon, maybe a group, a club out of Oregon. There's a club out of Oregon, mm -hmm. yeah. So if you did, yeah. I think I sent the information to you. I think it that. was who you yeah. sent us. Yeah, and we, you know, we didn't see a huge turnout for that, but again, it might take a couple years to catch on to and to get the word out so i mean we'd definitely be open to including that again yeah no, I, I love that idea because it, it seems to be a growing event big time and now it's actually going to the colleges actually colleges are, are bringing their uh, they're bringing their, their kids into it as far as uh um doing their own sponsorship and stuff for the colleges and bringing their that but it's school it's it's going big and i know because i have a lot of people that i associate with that do the cornhole now and it's it seems to be growing all over the united states so i love to see that thank you for doing that um putting it back on again because there's like i said we need this for our community so thank you um so i just like to see more of the concert <clears throat> more of the concerts in park just like was stated earlier because uh, that's been huge for our community so we'll just have to see where that goes in the future and, and maybe it can be coordinated with the farmer's market would be something yeah would be great to that. Have, have that coordinate at the same time in the future or something so great thank you guys great i guess the question the only question i have is when they do when you do have alcohol at the events it's just is it beer only yeah is it beer uh beer and wine as far as the vendors and then if a business has a full liquor license i believe they can you know Bring it's it it's not out on the street yeah. right yeah. right okay um 
Oh, well, they shouldn't be, but anyways, um, you know, I just not one to push banning things from people. If they wish to have a beer, they should be able to have a beer if they're up to 21 of age and at the events that we have, like the beef and brew, you know, it would be the beef and brew with taking the brew out. So it'd be a bit of a problem at that event <laughs> um, to take out there. Um, but I like that, you know, when they did, when I was there, they showcase, um, I think it was Edna Brewery was the brewery that was serving. That's a local company that uh, benefits from that. So like I said, I'm not one to tell people who, what their vices should be or whatnot. And um I'm not going to get into what a definition of a family event is or a community event. That could be a discussion for another day or time because that could be a slippery slope Mm -hmm. as far as inclusion. Because when you mention family, that can be very dangerous. And so I don't want to get into that, but it can be. And uh, so anyways, I support it as moving forward, just as you've done it, because I don't think there's been any problems. It's been great. Um, so with that said, no other councilman members have What's any comments or questions, I'll go to the public. Oh, I'll, you have another? I'll, I'll comment on, on that, the, the, the alcohol part of it. We put it on, like I said, with the Gold Rush days in the past years, we've never had any incidents. YPD's always been Johnny on the spot on all that. they got to look at two, the concert at the park. All the concert in the park was an open container at that point in time. And if we're, we got to be careful on, on if we start limiting that, I'm, I'm not a big alcohol drinker, so don't, you can't really go to me on that advice, but, um, you know, we have to look at two. There's the Greenhorn Park right now is you're allowed to drink there too. So if we start limiting on events, then we're going to be opening up a can of worms on a whole bunch of other things that are going on as far as Greenhorn Park and other places too. So that's a tough one. I totally understand because I'm not, a, like I said, I'm not a big alcohol drinker either, but um, I think we need to look at how that affects the whole community as a whole. And I think it's, it would would uh, hinder some of the businesses. Like I said, um, Aetna Brewery was in the past. It's not you know, necessarily so much now. When my uh, my Aunt Marilyn used to own it, we used, it was one of the huge sponsors for Gold Rush Days. So that was when you start looking at sponsors, you got to look at that aspect too on how you limit things. So thank you. That's my personal opinion that I don't think it should be limited. We just want people to be responsible and have fun. Yes. Right. (laughs) Okay. With that said, I will go to um, the public for public comment regarding the events um, as we talked about with Siski Economic Development. Hi, I'm 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 Mike Griffin Feeney again. I spoke earlier out of turn about uh, support of all the events going on. Uh, Mike Griffin Feeney um, between Montague and Wairika, and I call it Assistant Historic Tours. So obviously, I'm interested in history. (laughs) In changing Gold Rush to Heritage Days, I'm looking at a Gold Rush (laughs) up there on the city board. I'm seeing them over here. You know, I I mean, that kind of ranks me. I mean, I know we're in the 2024, but <laughs> if you were to come to Wairika, what would you see? You would see Miner Street. What is Miner Street? It is a gold rush town. So, I mean, it's a small point, whether it's Heritage Day, Gold Rush, I'm supporting them, whatever we do, as long as we don't figure it, forget about what this town is all about. It has this amazing history. Everything that we do should be in some of our old history, some way. whether it's Gold Rush Days, whether it's, you know, music or whatever. I mean, we can't forget to parlay our history into everything. I mean, there's a lot of people interested in this kind of stuff, whether they go to Jacksonville or Tombstone, Arizona. I mean, this is a big thing. We don't, we don't want to forget about this. And we have, we have a lot of stuff that still needs to be shown. You know, we have amazing gold collections somewhere in the county courthouse that someday we will be able to show. <laughs> not today, but someday. It <laughs> happened. And so, um, uh, anyway, I'm very supportive, and I will be helping out in any way I can from a historical standpoint or a muscle standpoint. So <laughs> thank you very much for supporting all these events that are being proposed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much better sitting here personally. I'm in favor of revitalizing the three community events that you're talking about. 
but in all hearing all the talking and whatnot, and it's probably me a little biased, but I'm going to say that we're talking about the businesses and whatnot, but you should also keep in mind the organizations, the service groups that have helped keep this town going yep. or help build things in this community. I'm not going to name any particularly, but they should be reached out to in these events to see if they want to participate or how they can participate and how to help that. Again, not to name organizations, but example, we're talking about the history of Wairika. There's a plaque right over there on that wall dated 1953, put there by one of the service organizations that dates back to 1925. They just celebrated their 99th anniversary serving this town continually. So I'm just saying, get your service groups into these two and they may not have food to serve, but they may have youth activities like one organization. I mean, we really wanted to participate in Gold Rush Days last year, but at the end of it, after going down all it would cost and different things and fees to get in, we just couldn't afford it. We couldn't afford to put that, I forgot what that amount was, put out, just sit there and let people sign up for information or kids play with sidewalk chalk. So I'm going to put that out there. Thank you. Um, I think bringing these events back is very important. Um, I've already gone over uh, any perspective during COVID, and people are tired. People are really tired, and we've lost our community, and we need to bring our community back, and we need to have fun events. This, the people in this community is what makes it unique, and we've all been isolated. We've lost a lot of our events, and we need to bring these events back. I don't want to step on toes, but I got really tired of being told what to do, what to put on my face, where to go, how to talk, how far to stand away from somebody. And you can go to Disneyland and you can get alcohol. You can go to Great America and you can get alcohol. Bringing back community is important. And people sometimes want to have a beer when they're having fun. And I don't think that we should limit alcohol in these events. People need to be responsible. If you've got YPD making sure that nobody's driving when they're drunk, we need to stop telling people what to do. We need to let them have fun. We need to let them bring their family. They need to have time to have community. People are broke right now. They can't run out to Disneyland and have a good time. They should be able to do something at home and they should support local businesses. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Heritage, yes. <laughs> Heritage days versus Gold Rush days. I know that that's going to bring a lot of energy. Um, I think in terms of the history, we don't need to say that you know we're losing our minor gold mining history if we're including other things. When you go to the County Museum of History, they have all of the beaver trappers who came before the miners, the people who were going up and down the trail that they developed. Thank you. Taylor, 
owner and chapter in the program. Um, I want to reiterate what Jamal said that she did nothing to say the better way. Um, as far as changing the name, it's more of a title. Inclusivity is very important in the community. Um, I am a tribe approved tribal member and I will I work with the Discover System and Tribe for your um, native involvement. And it was very difficult. It's a very touchy issue. Um, I was on the Chamber of Commerce ages ago. Uh, I was a lease for Boulder State. It was very difficult for me to have to put that on um, the street. But um, it was very popular because we brought in a different culture and everybody was celebrated instead of uh, one type or group. So I commend Discover Sisters for bringing a more inclusive idea to the event. That being said, um, I also I work with these ladies. I always say ladies and gentlemen are the only group, but <laughs> these ladies are amazing. They think outside of the box. That's what our community needs to bring more people to our community. That's their purpose. So we should move them wherever they want, basically, in my <laughs> um, They're outstanding follow through with an event. Those people down, people came in the rain. I was incredibly impressed with that for was that Daddy Light? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it was raining out and the streets were still packed. Uh, I don't get out, I don't even get to get out of my my shop to go and look and see all what's going on. But what I can see out of my window, everything is high standard. It's like I said, out of the box thinking, which we need. Um, putting more limitations on things. We already have tons of limitations and policies and all of that with our events. Let let people choose for themselves what they want to do. Simple. Um, so please, uh, I'm sure you are, but please consider supporting them financially and backing them in every way possible to bring more people to our community. That's great. Thank you. <clears throat> organization Discover Sister does an amazing job. They are uh, professional, talented, and just do a great job. So I support them. And while I do not make utter people, I don't care if it's open, if there's a beer garden or those sorts of things. It, it doesn't affect me. And I think that it all can be accomplished with balance and together on the team. So yeah, I think that's Thank you. Country, um, yes, it was an amazing <coughs> event last year. I wondered about the two days, but the second day ended up being better than the first day. But I would say changing the name. How about doing Gold Rush Day slash Heritage for the first year so people can know what Heritage is? Because people know what Gold Rush Day is, what it means, what it means to people far away who wait for that to come up on the calendars and they see Gold Rush Days, they call motels, they schedule, you know, their whole weekend around that. Heritage Days, they're not going to know what that is. That's new. That's what is, they might come, but they're not going to come for bull rush days because, you know, they don't, it's, it's named different. So I would say incorporate the name first, but please support them. Go. Thank you. Okay. I will close um, public comment and come back to the council. Uh, so the recommended city council action before you is the motion to approve Discover Siskiyou's City of Arica Events Proposal 24-2026 and direct city manager to use $35,000 from the, or, I'm sorry, from the city council community fund budget for the 2024 
Wairika Heritage event and one concert in the park event for the fiscal year 2023-2024. What are the issues of the council? I'll, I'll make the motion as presented. I have a motion from uh, Councilman Cake. I'll second it. And a second from Councilman Davis. I'll do roll call. Councilman Cake? Aye. Councilman Davis? Aye. Councilman Baker? Yes. Uh, pro Tim Councilman McCoy? Aye. And Mayor Middleton be aye. So the motion passes five to zero. Thank you. Okay, with that, we'll go into the city manager and staff report. City manager and staff may make brief announcements or reports at this time. We might want to wait a second while everybody's going to clear out on us now. <laughs> we kept them long enough. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for coming. We appreciate it. Someone left their phone, someone left their keys. <laughs> yeah, they'll be back. Then we'll go for it. Technical down. difficulties here. Uh, I think that's working now. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Wairika City Council. So this is my staff report today for 319. Uh, just want to remind everybody on Council, the Form 700 filings are due April 1st. Uh, we know for a fact that Mr. Davis is compliant because Cindy <laughs> Prohaska mailed that out. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So yeah, we just want to make sure everybody is aware. And if you have any issue... Uh, please come see the clerk. Please schedule some time with her and we will walk you through the process if you need help with that. Uh, finally, I just want to let everybody know that um, the Community Center HVAC RFP had no bids. Uh, the Public work, Works Director and myself met with our city attorney, Mr. Andrew Jared, uh, to better understand our options. The Public Works Director had a very successful meeting today concerning this project. And we are planning on bringing back a contract uh, rather rapidly to the city council once we solidify that plan with the contractor. So things are in motion and there's more to come on that project. Uh, the city received one nonprofit group interested in managing the Wairika Citizen of the Year event. Staff has been working with this nonprofit and will be bringing this item for council consideration uh, tentatively 416 is when we're planning on doing that. Uh, unfortunately, we were unable to locate the prior binder with uh, Miss Ogren on this, uh, on how this event was managed in the past. Uh, but we have some good ideas that we will be proposing to form a commission made up of two members of the nonprofit, two council members, and then our district supervisor. And then that group would be really working to finalize some of the more intricate details, but more to come on that matter, 416. Uh, Council member Davis and I met with Garen Hainan today over at Discover, Discovery High. Uh, he's the principal. Uh, we toured and discussed kind of the programs over at Discovery High and just some of the issues um, or concerns or opportunities or ideas that um, Mr. Hainan sees for partnership with the city. And I do plan on taking three council members over there this Friday as well. We have that scheduled. Um, the fire chief and I have started at, uh, our education tour discussing the state of the Wairika Volunteer Fire Department. 
we have met with the Elks Club, the Fairchild Hospital Board, uh, and we had we've done a couple different interviews for JPR and KOBI five, and we will continue to meet with the nonprofits um, and different organizations here over the coming months. Uh, and then just finally, I will be off next week. My son's on spring break, um, and uh, I'll be in town if I'm needed. So feel free to reach out. Thank All you. Right. I just want to thank you guys for being on KBO, KBI 5, you and Chief up there, both celebrities now. <laughs> but you guys did a great job, though. It was presented okay. really well on the on Don't news on channel, and it was really, I think, well accepted. So thank you. That's what it takes is to bring it to the, the populace and some of us old bogeys still like to read the newspaper and still watch the channel five, the local news on TV every morning that I do. So thank you. Thank you. I missed it. Sorry. <laughs> well, based off I'll pull, of our, I'll pull it up. Based of our, our communications ad hoc meetings, we will be posting it on our Facebook page. Okay. So. Perfect. Um, all right. Thank you, Mr. Ledbetter. All right. Council members, I'll go to Councilman Davis. Any reports from you? Sure, I do have one actually. Hey. Um, <laughs> Chief Lemus brought his attack vehicle by uh, the, the wildland fires. That is an amazing vehicle. Mm -hmm. And we are really happy to have that in our fleet, Chief. So good job. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the other thing is, before this event, I did take a survey downtown. I think I mentioned that, but I went down on Saturday and kind of surveyed the businesses, and it was really pretty positive. And, and as you can see, they showed up on the uh, on the farmers market issue, and yeah. it was good. It was really good, and it was kind of fun to do that. I got down there and get to visit the old minor street stuff. <laughs> so that's what I have for you, Curry. All right, there. thank you. I'll go to you. Councilman Baker. I don't have a report tonight. All right. Councilman I Cake. I don't have much. I'll just one quick thing that there be for the, the homeless thing that we got going on for the shower trucks. That'll be next um, next Tuesday, Tuesday, correct? I think it is. Tuesday. I don't know. That's what we have. The county, I should <laughs> say, is what's going on. They have it Tuesday from 9 to 4, the shower truck at lower Green Hornet, at the, actually the um, Red Ranger. School House. And um, so that's just let people know what's going on there. Um, hopefully after the uh, shelter gets up and op opened up that we don't have to worry too much about that, that I'll be helped with that situation. Um, as far as I want to get back to, we might have to address this in a future um, meeting or whatnot, but the, the discussion about Heritage Days and and uh, gold rush days, uh, you know, we'll have to, we'll, we'll see how this year goes. I think um, I got mixed emotions on it. Be quite honest with you. My, my family was first settlers here and we came out for the gold rush in the 1850s, but um, I do have two aunts that are Karuk too. So um, I have a big um, dilemma on that aspect on how you look at the, of way Wairika was founded because um, like I said, it takes all the kinds and bringing them together. And when we were part of the last part of the gold rush days doing the, through the chamber of commerce, um, that was one of the big dilemmas was trying to bring in the, the tribes, the Karuk tribe and trying to get them involved. We actually, when Chris Taylor was actually doing it, was on the, on the, on the chamber at the point in time too. She was a uh, very, uh, instrumental on bringing the tribe and doing they did a, a couple um, dances and whatnot their rain dance and a few other things so it was really neat to see that and then they did brought in some um, some of the, their, their events as far as like basket weaving and stuff like that so I think it needs to be looked at I don't know if heritage days is a perfect verbiage for the event but I think it's something we need, if we need to look at and maybe after this year and see what it, how it takes off and maybe come up with some a better idea for uh, uh, sponsoring a, uh, not necessarily sponsoring, but uh, coming up with an idea for the name of it, maybe that would be better suited. Um, but other than that, that's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. Thank you.
Councilman McCoy? Sorry, I'm standing up. I'm cramping. League of Local <laughs> Agencies is April 10th. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's all you have? Okay, great. I don't have much. I just want to, um, I did go with uh, Chief Lemus and um, as uh, Mr. Ledbetter stated in the email that I did go up and we talked to the general manager at the Rain Rock Casino about um, the future of the fire department and uh, Chief did his presentation and then we got to have a tour of the um, their expansion and um, it's come along uh, quite nicely. It's way bigger than I thought it was going to be. And it'll be amazing once it's done. Um, but wow, they have great plans up there. And um, it's going to be um, definitely a destination for Wairika that Wairika hasn't seen as far as lodging and just their event center and everything. And I hope everybody takes the opportunity. He's invited everybody to come up, and especially I think in, was it July? Is when they're having their grand opening or their special event for us or something like that? Was it July? They're phasing the opening. The expansion of the casino, I think, is May, June, and then the hotel will open July. And I already have Council Member Baker and I are scheduled to go on a Great. tour. And yeah, anyone else that would like a tour, let me know. And I, I recommend schedule it. it. Totally recommend it. It's amazing. Um, so you'll definitely enjoy it. I was I'm really impressed. Um, I know when we went to the groundbreaking and um, uh, Councilman Keg was the mayor at the time and he spoke and um, it was just the dirt and they had all the renderings out there, but to see it just from start and now you look up there and it's massive. Yeah. When you look up there, you're like, whoa, and um, but it's going to be um, great. So, and um, they brought in a lot of jobs currently, you know, that are building and they're going to add on quite a few jobs when they open up. So that was exciting. But um, other than that, um, it was a great evening. I'd like to see everybody and like to see the community involvement and um, hear from everybody, you know, instead of us down here making decisions without hearing input, uh, without, you know, trying to decide what citizens want. But to have participation like that is um, very good. So I'm, I'll end with that and um, wish everybody a great evening. All right, meeting adjourned.